got your Bibles, I'll be reading one verse from 2 Timothy chapter five, uh, 3, chapter 3, verse 15. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15. And that from a child thou hast known yes, sir. the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. I'll read it again. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Father, for this morning. I thank you, Father, for this time I could preach your word, ask you to anoint my lips of clay, anoint our ears to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I was hoping there'd be more visitors this morning. You know what? I was hoping there'd be some lost. You know what I've learned? If you got a message for the lost and you don't see anybody here, it's on Spreaker, isn't it? Good. That's good enough. If it's on Spreaker, that's fine. But I've often learned you're better off preaching to, to a group of saints about salvation yeah. Amen. than to be preaching, you know, to a bunch of sinners like they're okay. Right. Right. Amen. Amen. This morning I'm preaching a simple message. Amen. Believe it or not, I do that. <laughs> salvation, plain, pure, and simple. Amen. Salvation, plain, Pure and simple. I was even thinking last night preaching while I preached on the street corner, but the Lord dealt with me to preach this. Yes, sir. Salvation, plain, pure, and simple. I uh, knew a friend. He was a good, good friend of mine. Sad to say, I don't think he was really saved. A nice man treated me good. His, he had a son that I went to high school with, graduate the same class. I wound up getting closer to the dad than I ever did get close to either of his sons. His name, Dorman Phillips, Velkins, West Virginia. Very close friend of mine for years until he passed away first day of, of uh, 2007. I'll never forget, I'd go by his house a lot <clears throat> after I got saved especially because he, even though I don't think he was where he needed to be with the Lord, he liked to talk about the things of God. Yeah. Amen. He loved talking about the things of God. And he actually loved things like God doing miracles too. But anyway, back to what I was ready to say. He had an expression. <clears throat> He'd say something. He said, that's the facts, plain, pure, and simple. He used to use that a lot. Also about the same time, uh, the sword Lord printed a, a, a track called Salvation, Plain and Simple. And I thought to myself, boy, I wish I'd gave it to Dorman. But anyway, enough on that. But you know something? I believe this morning, salvation is a message, plain, pure, and simple. Yes, Number one, it's a plain message. What do you mean? It deals with the sinfulness of man. I believe this morning the problem of mankind is sin. It's not, uh, you know, uh, wars. That's actually a sign of the problem. It's not a political strife. That's part of the problem. You know, I even go as far as saying the disease coronavirus. There would not be any diseases in this world if man had never sinned. When man was in the garden, there was no coronavirus, no flu, no cancer, no heart troubles, no diabetes, and, the, and there was even no death. Man that would have never died if man had never sinned. Amen. But anyway, there was Adam. One day, his wife, was tempted by a serpent. I personally believe it was the devil came directly to her. Amen. Because what does the Bible call him elsewhere? The serpent. <clears throat> I'll tell you what happened in that moment. He tried saying, listen, you could eat of every tree in this garden, but the one in the mist, 
You know what? He was trying to say, listen, the Lord's denying you of something. You know what? That's a sad thing because guess what? The Lord gives us the best. That's why he sends his commandments. That's why he sends his word so we can have the best of whatever everything in this life. People think they need more pleasure in order to have the best. I got news for you this morning. There may be pleasure in sin, but sin brings death. Come on. Anyway, one day the, the devil came to her and tempted her and she partook of the forbidden fruit. I don't know what it was. I don't believe it was an, a, an apple like some people say. Amen. I just believe it was some fruit that the Lord had never even told us what it was. Amen. She partook of that fruit. I, and then what happened? She handed it to her husband. And when he bit into it, man sin. And sin entered into the world and death by sin. You know, we hear stories about people dying now. You know, we hear about like uh, Brother Calicott dying this yeah. week, past week, yeah. coronavirus, and quite a other pe- few people. You know, it's making me more thankful than ever that I survived it to hear about coronavirus deaths. Amen. Is it my imagination, but is it actually on the rise now, the deaths from it? It seems like it to me. But regardless, you know, I believe this morning, if man had never sinned, we would never be worrying about the coronavirus now or about anything else, cancer, heart troubles, diabetes, or anything. But because sin entered into the world, death entered into the world, and death by sin. The problem, the sinfulness of man. Romans chapter 3, verse 9 through 18, we read every person's biography. You say, oh, now, Brother Roy, I'm not that bad of a person. According to the Bible, all have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. That's the black man. That's the white man. That's the yellow man. That's the brown man. That's the red man. It don't matter what your skin color is. All have sinned. It's the Jew. It's the Gentile. It's the Greek. It doesn't matter. All have sinned. It's the rich. It's the poor. It's the middle class. It's the beggar. All have sinned and have come short of the glory of God. All men have sinned. And sin is in this world. I believe this morning sin is what's the, the reason we're having so many troubles in the political circuit, yes, in the rioting, in thievery, people getting by of crime. I've been, I've never been amazed how many people will go do robberies now and never get caught. Yet somebody could be falsely accused of a crime and it seems like they don't have a fighting chance to avoid being found innocent when they really were. It's a frightful hour. The Bible says that we're in the last days. That's not even part of my message. But I believe we're in the last of the last days of perilous times. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous boasters, proud blasphemers. Uh, Amen. Disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. That's what you were dealing with earlier. Homosexuality unnatural affection. I don't know why I feel led to say this. Truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce despisers, those that are good. Let me just harp on that a minute. People are hating the church. They're hating the truth. You know what? Some people think hate crime really, you know hate crime is really Becoming now, it's when you speak the truth. Amen. It doesn't matter how nice you are. Sometimes a person will say something straight out of the Bible, and somebody and they'll be nice and polite about, and the people will say, You're hateful. And that's about the way they sound too. Come on. Amen. 
traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure, more than lovers of God, having the form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. I'll tell you what, this morning, we're in the last of the last days. Don't worry, I'm, 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 I'm not totally off the subject. I'm heading right back there. I believe that's part of the problem of mankind because of sin entering into the world and death by sin. It's a plain message because it deals with the fall and the sins of mankind. I'm one of these old timers that believe the reason we, are, we sin is because we are sinners. Amen. I believe we were, uh, I believe as David said, behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. No, he wasn't born without wedlock. What he was saying is, listen, I was born with this nature, this tendency to sin. And I believe we're all born with it. As we often find out when we're raising children, you don't have to teach your child to do bad. You have to discipline them to do good. Woohoo! Can I tell you something? I preached this one time along this line out in Oklahoma. I believe the reason we spank our children, we often quote, spare the rod and spoil the child. That's not what it says. It says you hate your child. Woo! That's why I believe we need to spank them, not abuse them. But to spank them. There's a difference. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. One time I preached this at a certain church somewhere in this United States. I found out that various Sunday earlier I preached, there was the police called on the church on somebody in the church because they were spanking their child. They came by and told about. But I love what the policemen in that area said. They said, Well, we're not gonna do a line up here. And besides that. That mother is is helping us in our job. Come on. I'm thankful for hearing stories like that, don't you? Amen. But anyway, there is man is sinful by nature. We're not good by nature. We're evil by nature. Amen. And there is a reality of hell. We all know that we're destined to die one of these days. It doesn't matter whether you're saved or lost. The Bible says, and as is appointed unto men, wants to die after this, the judgment, Hebrews 9, 27, to David in second in first Kings chapter two, verse two says, I go the way of all the earth. I'll tell you something. We've all got that appointment. Amen. I don't care whether you're rich, poor, or middle class. We've all got that appointment. Amen. Everybody, and believe it or not, everything has that appointment. That dog you love or that cat you love has got that appointment with death. Amen. That goldfish you love. Amen. It's got an appointment with death. We all do. Barring the rapture of the church. Amen. But this, the issue isn't whether we die or not. It's how we live before we die. Whether we've received Christ or not. Because I'll tell you what, there is a heaven to gain and there's a hell to shun. In Luke chapter 16, you'll have to read it. It says it deals with two men, a rich man and a poor man. And I think, uh, you, didn't you hear something that you probably hadn't heard before, Brother Sterrett? I've, I've actually heard this. Most people picture Lazarus as a poor, crippled beggar. He was crippled and he was poor. But I don't believe he was just a beggar in the strictest sense of the word. What do you mean, Brother Roy? He was doing more than begging for bread. He was begging for that rich man's soul. The name Lazarus means assist from God. So I'm just giving you a different theory on why he was there. I do not believe he was there just looking for a crumb from the rich man's table. I believe he was trying to reach that rich man's soul. 
I believe he was like a street preacher. Probably laid at his gate and daily tried to call people into repentance. You probably don't hear this much. He had to be laid there daily. He probably couldn't walk without a cane. Probably needed help even then. You know what I said last night? I'm going to go ahead and say it this morning. I don't know why. I'm saying it again. I believe, you know, that rich man probably made himself look like some philanthropist. In right. reality, right. he despised that baby. Yes, sir. Right. He just fed him the crumbs. And right. I'm not even going to go in details. I've read different commentaries on what the crumbs really were. It's not too pleasant. Amen. I'll just say that this. What he was dealing with, you know, we talk about napkins. They used their bread as napkins in that day. And I'll drop it right there. I'll tell you something. That beggar was there begging for that man's soul. Begging for him to turn to God. Begging for him to be saved. Amen. You know what happened? One day, they both had an appointment. And I'm going to say, just the way I read the scripture, if you disagree, it's okay. It's no heaven or hell issue if we disagree on this. But by the way I read the scriptures, I basically feel they both died the same day. It sure sounds like it, doesn't it? Amen. I believe it. if it wasn't the same day, it wasn't far apart. One died. That poor man could have been helped by that rich man if he would have turned his heart to God. He could have helped him maybe get something to improve his lot. But he just left him there. Left him there to die. He still, I believe, Lazarus reached out to him. He died. Lazarus. And was carried. Meanwhile, and I believe basically the same day. That's just the way I see it. You may not see it that way. I do. The rich man died. And he was buried. Probably the Holy Roller Church in that area probably had to get some money together. Probably got an old pine wood box, maybe even an old cardboard box. I've actually heard of times when people were so poor they put them in a in a in a cardboard box. That's no joke. I remember that brother Heath tells us that in Bible school. Yes, sir. That's probably basically how he was buried. You know what? That rich man, he probably was at, at the at the uptown synagogue in Jerusalem. Probably the one he gave the money for to find. The rabbi there in his great robes was there. Tell him what a good man he was. Amen. And while he was there, tell him what a good man he was. That man, they call him Dives. Amen. Amen. That's what some people call him. I don't know what his real name is. Doesn't really matter. Dives. Well, he was, while the man, the rabbi was telling how Dives was in the highest part of heaven. There he was in hell saying, Don't tell that lie! If he could hear it. There really is a heaven to gain. And a hell to shun. Right now, down in well, now it's in heaven. I believe Laz, believe Abraham's bosom or paradise was under the earth until one day Jesus died on the cross and paradise opened up. And now all the saints, both New Testament and Old Testament, are now in heaven. Amen. Amen. But there he was, but right now. He's in heaven, Lazarus, a poor old, but the poor lost rich man, he's still in hell, begging for one drop of water. It's a horrible place. There is a real hell to lose, a real hell to shun. 
And sad to say the majority of the world is heading there. Salvation plain. It's a plain message because of the sin of man. It's a plain message because of the reality of hell. And one more reason, because of the reality of the final judgment. What do you mean? Did you know everybody here is going to be in one or two judgments? The judgment seat of Christ or the beam of judgment. What do you mean by that? It's not so much a judgment because of the wrong things we have done. It's because God is going to reward us according to how we ran the race. Did we, whenever we went out on the street, street corner, did we go out there because we love God and love the souls of man? Or did we go out there just to show what a great preacher we're not? <laughs> Our in are. Are we uh, going to church because we love God? Because we want to hear God's word and hear from God? Or are we going here because Susie Q's here? <laughs> Come on. Come on. Come on. I'll just tell you what I've often said about that verse. He that findeth a wife findeth a good thing. That's if you find a wife in the will of God. If you find a, a wife out of the will of God... You find just the thing. Right. Not enough on that. But this morning, there's the beam of judgment. Did you, uh, did you, when he made that motion at a business meeting to save the camp meeting from splitting? Did you do it because you really loved God and did not want that to split? Or was you mad at somebody? I know a man that would honestly tell you that would save the camp meeting. He did it because he was mad at somebody. Thank God he's got right. Amen. But I'll tell you what this morning. Your motive is going to affect you at the beam of judgment or, white, or the judgment seat of Christ. I hope that everybody here is heading there. Because if it's not, there's the other judgment. The white throne. I believe the beam of judgment is a private judgment. Amen. Believe it or not, I believe we'll just be waiting in line to be judged. There. We won't know what the other believer gets. But the white throne judgment is a public judgment. It's a fearful judgment. It's a judgment that I would not want to be at. I believe this, and we can disagree on this. I believe we'll be there as witnesses to it. I know one preacher says, no, I don't think we will be. I'm sorry, I think we will be. Amen. We'll see every sinner, they'll be judged. And everything that's not under the blood of Jesus Christ will be shouted from the rooftops in that hour. Those sins that man thought they never would be caught up with I tell you what, sinner man, if you're going to be caught, you're better off caught now. Yeah. Because in that day when it's shattered from the rooftops, when everything is brought before the whole world, there'll be no hiding place and there'll be no redemption then. I tell you what, Revelation 20 verses 11 through 15 shows it as a horrible place. And as I go throughout the scriptures, Matthew chapter 12, 33 to 37, when every idle word is judged there, yeah. yes. those things you thought nobody knew about will be judged. Right, It'll be too late. Yes, sir. And after that, oh, you're cast into the lake of fire. It's a plain message. It's a pure message. Why well, I mean pure? It's the sinless Savior Jesus who took our sins for us. As 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says, For he that hath he, for he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be the righteousness of God in him. 
Jesus died for our sins. Amen. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. When Jesus died on the cross, he died in our place. Every sin that we had ever committed will be laid on, was laid upon him in that hour. I'm going to say something. I do not believe when Jesus was praying and agonizing in the garden of Gethsemane, saying, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as I will. You know, I do not believe he was doing it because he dreaded the pains of the nails going into his hand or the whip back, uh, taking his skin off or, or, the nail, uh, or the thorns going into his head as a crown. You know what I believe it was? I believe he knew he was going to face having the sins placed upon him. He was a holy God. Amen. He also knew his father was going to turn his back on him in that hour. Amen. I like what my friend, the late Dr. Robert L. Sumner said. Some lady came to him for counseling one time. Her and her husband, they were telling about how their sin, their their son had turned his back on God and they were all broke up. And the mother said, you know, I'm thankful the Lord knows how I feel right now. He himself even felt that the father forsook him. And when the, Dr. Sumner then was a young man, well, you know, only in his early 20s, he lived to be 94. You know, he did. After he closed the door, he was polite. He waited till the door was closed. And then he shook his head and said, no, no, no. Jesus just did not feel the father. Felt like the father forsook him. It was because the father did forsake him. He turned his back on because of sin. Amen. I'll tell you, he died in our place. He died in our place. God commended his love towards us. And while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. He died that cruel death on the cross. They say the cross was one of the most horrible deaths of that day and age. Because virtually you'd hang there. Yes, you'd have to push yourself up every so often to, to get up to breathe. It was one of the most horrible, cruel forms of death ever made. Amen. The reason they broke their legs, and it was really a merciful thing when they did. Because when they did that, they could never get up to breathe again. And they would die. But I'll tell you what, Jesus never had his bones broken, did he? Amen. He never had a bone broken. What happened? He gave up the ghost. And when they went to, kill, uh, the, to make sure he was dead, water and blood came out of his heart. A sign that he died of a broken heart. He was broken over our sins. Amen. I wasn't even planning on preaching like this this morning, but I feel this is the way I need to go. Amen. He died in our place, a cruel death on the cross. He went into the underworld and he preached to the, 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 this, the Old Testament saints down there. There was Lazarus looking up. I, I kind of lean that Lazarus actually probably knew Jesus at one point. I could be wrong. That's just a thought. He looked up, that's my master. And then there was Abraham. He said, that's the one we were looking for. Daniel said, that's the one that we were looking for. Amen. A amen. amen. Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Isaiah. They all said, that's the one we were looking for. And all of a sudden, another man comes into paradise. And they think that they look at that man unexpectedly. Lord God. And Jesus, I believe, put his arm on the man. This is just a, a thought. And Jesus says, Sir, I want you to tell these men who've done great exploits in times past for me. 
what you did for me. He said, Master, I was nothing but a cruel thief. I lied, I stole, I cheated, I've done horrible things. And I'm not worthy to be in this company. And he said, but sir, will you tell him why? Because I was a thief dying next to you on the cross. And I looked up at you, and the best I could pray, I said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And you said, today thou shalt be with me in paradise. You saved my wretched soul. I've never done any great thing like Abraham or Isaac or Jacob. But I'm here because of your blood and because of your grace. Amen. Amen. It's a plain message. It's a pure message. And it's a simple message. I don't believe salvation is that hard. I think sometimes we complicate it, number one. Because sometimes there's things we're not ready to let go of. That's the problem with many people nowadays. You know, we shouldn't be, there shouldn't be anything we shouldn't desire to let go of for God. Amen. It says in Isaiah 35, verse 8, The wayfarer man, though fools, shall not err therein. I believe that's how it is with salvation. What did the the religious leaders say about Peter and John? They said these were ignorant and unlearned men. So we shouldn't really be missing it. But it is a simple message. Sad, many are just not willing to follow Jesus. They're not willing to hang. They want to hang on to too many things. What we have to do to be saved first off we got to recognize our need. All have sinned and have come sure of the glory of God. They that be whole need not a physician, but they that are sick. Until you can get a man realizing that they're lost, they can never be saved. I almost love it when I talk to a sinner and they said, I'm not worthy to go to church. I'm just a wicked person. You all don't want me there. I feel like saying, well, you're the one we're looking for. Come on in. You're the one you were looking for because you know we don't have to deal with you as much as some of the others. Because you've already made the first step. You've acknowledged how unworthy you are. Number two, you got to repent of your sins. That's godly sorrow for sin. What do you mean godly sorrow? Some people are just sorry because they got caught in their sin. But this is real salvation is when you're sorry enough. With the help of God, you're going to lay it down. You're sorry enough because you've hurt God. Yes, you've hurt the heart of God. You've broke the laws of God. Right. Amen. And you know, that, and you're now ready and willing just to rep- lay them all down. And then just by a simple act of faith, oh, receive him. Receive him. Also, you need to believe that he died and rose again. I didn't want Leave that out. As the man is, but and thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead. You must believe he rose from the dead. If you believe he's still, if you believe he's still in that tomb, forget it. If you believe some of these Amen. these uh, gravestones over in Israel, where it supposedly says Jesus. By the way, read Colossians chapter four. Jesus was not was not. Jesus the Christ was not the only uh, Jesus of that day. That's right, right. There was a Jesus in John in Colossians four right. named Justice. Yes, sir. Yeah. Amen. But the G, the true Jesus, the one we want, He rose. Yes. He's at the right hand of God the Father. Yes. And if you're just by faith re- repent of your sin yes. and then receive Him, you can be saved today. But as many as received Him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. I'm ready to close. Can somebody come play? Anybody? I don't care who's plays or sings, just as long as you live right. Amen. Amen, But this morning, if you don't know Jesus, now's the time. 
Now's the time. If you've known him one time and your heart is hard now. You know what? The people are backslidden according to the Bible. Oh, it's when they go out and get drunk. You've already been backslidden for a while. It's when you've committed adultery. You've already been backslidden for a long time. I'm not joking. It's whenever you commit a horrible crime like murder. You've already been backslidden. Some people ask me, you believe a person commits adultery and the rapture happens, they'll be left behind? Sure. But the problem is this. At one time before it happened, would the rapture happen, they've been left behind. I believe by that time you get there, you've already long backslid. Does the Bible say, says the backslider in heart shall be filled with his own ways. That's actually when you're backslidden. You can still be in church. You can still, you can be in the middle of a revival and backslide. I believe that. Tonight, this morning, I don't care whether you come to this church or go to another church. If you don't know the Lord, or if you've known Him one time, right. you're backslidden. Let this morning be the time to turn to Jesus. Anybody? Anybody? I'm just going to go ahead and give a general order call. If you know, need to know Jesus, come this morning. Come.